it's time for Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell. Breaking down game-changing plays, momentum-shifting moves, the inside scoop on the team and what's next for the Knolls. Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell, live from downtown Tallahassee. ABC 27 presents Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell. Sponsored by these businesses. Now, the voice of the Seminoles, Gene Deckerhoff, and head coach, Mike Norvell. Good evening and welcome to the Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell show. Florida State Football was on the air. This is the 75th season uh, presented by Chick-fil-A. Welcome to the Inside Seminole Football with Coach Mike Norvell. It's a Monday night. Well, that's why we're here. We're talking Florida State football on a, a chilly. Well, you got the jacket on. I got the two layers. And it's a little cool outside, Coach. It is. It's a, one that, uh, that fall weather's uh, in full effect. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, uh, you're excited about uh, Miami week being here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know everybody's looking forward to Saturday and, uh, you know, uh, trying to bounce back from uh, from it was a challenging week last week. Uh, you know, I thought our guys, you know, competed and played hard, but uh, you know, definitely, definitely looking forward to the week ahead. Yeah, and, and it's football weather. It's going to be mid November, and we've got Miami coming. In. Our oldest rivalry, whether in the conference or not the conference, we started playing these guys back in 1951, coach, and uh, about 30 straight years. Uh, each team was both either one team or the other were ranked in 25 of those years in a row. Both teams were ranked, and uh, about seven times a uh, number one team was involved in this rivalry, and it has become maybe it's a national rivalry. I mean, people across the country always think Florida State, Miami. This is a huge week for football. Oh, no question. And this is, a, you know, uh, you know, as I grew up, I remember watching this game, every opportunity that I had, and, uh, you know, just all the great players, just, uh, you know, one of the one of the greatest rivalry games uh, in, in all of sports. Yeah. And uh, to be able to be a part of it, you know, unfortunately last, you know, last year, um, you know, due to COVID, I wasn't able yeah. to. Uh, to, to be a part of that game and uh, you know it it's uh, it's something that you know you look you look forward to it year round and uh, you know that's something that our players uh, whether it's in January workouts through spring ball you know summer workouts I mean you always you always have a focus on on this game and you know it's it's a special uh, opportunity uh, you know it's huge for our program huge for our university you know, our fan base everybody involved and uh, you know it's uh, you know, it's gonna be a great week of prep and we're looking forward to it you know coach you mentioned uh, the, the the COVID bug bit you the week of the Miami game last year and you could not go there now around around college football around the NFL you you see where a head coach can't be at the what was it like watching your team play on the road and not being there uh, that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to I've ever had to do and um, you know I was I actually had to sit I was sitting in my living room you know I, had to, I was actually uh, you know quarantined away from uh, Maria and Mila and that was so it was it was just a um, it was a terrible night, and yeah. uh, I mean, you know, then you know, just to see your team out and uh, you know, you're going to compete, but not being able to to be there to impact, uh, you know, any any part of the game, and um, you know, it was. Uh, it was a challenge, but um, you know I'm excited about this week ahead, and uh, you know it's been it's been a long time coming, and uh, you we're, we're looking forward to going to work. Yeah, Florida State, Miami, and Coach, uh, it is Senior Day. This will be the final home game of the year, and and uh, a Senior Day is very important. It's very special to a head coach, also to the players who have family will be here, and uh, they'll play at Doe Campbell Stadium for the final time in their career. It's a special day to be a Florida State Seminole. Oh, no question, and we've got some great seniors that will be playing their last contest, and uh, you know they've been through a lot, and you know some guys uh, are coming. In and you know they've you know five or six years you know uh, where they've they've worked they've invested they've seen change they've they've seen development and uh, you know just all that's all that's been uh, you know put into the program and then we have guys that have come in and uh, you know they they've only been here for a year and uh, you know there's still that that same investment through the season of of trying to make an impact and really building the foundation of of, of who we are what we're about and uh, you know for for all those guys I mean for this the last time that they're going to be able to to play out there on Bobby Bowden Field at Dope Campbell Stadium I mean it's uh, it's going to be a, a, an emotional time and uh, but I know uh, you know that, that we want to send them out the right way and uh, you know what better opponent to be able to play than uh, than Miami here this week I'm glad you mentioned Bobby Bowden Field because today would have, would have been Bobby's 92nd birthday and uh, they had a golf tournament uh, here at town FCA did in honor of coach Bowden raised some money for FCA and uh, uh, that brings back some memories you know 
92 years today, Bobby would be. Florida State, North Carolina State, Coach, before we go to break, let's talk a little bit about our last outing. And, uh, golly, when did, did, when did we learn that Jordan Travis, our quarterback, was not going to be able to play? Well, you know, he, he wasn't available for, uh, for uh, most of the week, actually. And, uh, and then as we got closer to the game, um, you know, it, we didn't, didn't get the progress that was needed. And he just, there was just no chance that he was going to be able to, uh, uh, to, to go out there and, and, and be able to play. And it was something that, you know, I, I hate that for, for any young man. We had a couple guys that, uh, that weren't available due to uh, the circumstances of, of last week. And, uh, you know, there's so much investment year-round. And, you know, for, for these guys, you know, when they miss an opportunity to go out there and compete, it's uh, – I mean, it breaks my heart because, you know, they, they, they love this game. They love their teammates. They, they want to be able to, to go out there and make that impact. But, unfortunately, you know, they weren't, they weren't able to. And, uh, um, you know, but, you know, it also provided other guys opportunities. And, uh, you know, it was uh, just one of those things that, you know, unfortunately that game didn't, didn't uh, you know, finish the way that, that we wanted to. But I thought our guys still put on display, a, a, you know, great heart. Uh, you know, a lot of guys that overcame some, some extremely challenging situations. I mean, we had guys that were getting IV just to be able to practice you know, last week. I mean, we, you know, we, I think I mentioned after the, after, uh, after the game, I we had over 25 guys that, that missed at least one practice last week, and there were certain pit positions that wow. uh, we only had one guy available, you know, out there for a practice. Uh, and I mean, that, that's a, th those are challenges, but it, you know, once again, it's also, uh, you know, learning experiences and opportunities and, and guys that have to step up and go and, um, you know, and, and perform, you know, even when things maybe don't feel great. And it's just, uh, um, you know, that was, a, that was a challenging game, but I was really proud of the effort that I saw from our guys and the way that they fought and responded you know, even after a, after, after a very challenging beginning. Uh, due to flu and to injury, uh, seven different offensive line starting units. And you can't get much continuity if you're having to change your starting unit. We, we had some guys get sick this week of the offensive line. Oh, we did. And, um, you know, it's just, you know, that group, uh, I know we've talked about them a lot. You know, mm. it's, it's just been – uh, it's one of those things that you go through a season and you're you're hopeful for the health and the, and the safety of those guys, but I mean it's been it's been a challenging year for us and there's been a lot of uh, revolving rotations. Um, you know they put in a lot of work. You know just the versatility. Uh, you know Brady Scott started at guard. I think Brady's played I mean almost every position this year. Um, but I mean you know, just really uh, the work that that he's that he's done and you know all those guys on the offensive line. I mean it's uh, you know you know they're they're doing it for each other, but but also you know with each other and, and trying to have each other back, uh, you know, with, with whatever the, the, the circumstance might call for. Speaking of the offensive line, Devontae uh, Love Taylor is going to be one of our student athlete guests tonight, and uh, Jordan Wilson, uh, tight end head. I think he had a career game against North Carolina State. Some big kids had a big one against Clemson. They'll, they will be our student athlete guest of the week before we go to break, and, and, and Chris is going to tell me when we have to go to break. Uh, I thought that Mackenzie Melton, after not being play, played for five games, came in and showed a lot of guts and determination to run the offense of Florida State University in that ball game against NC State. Yeah, you know, Mackenzie, it, um, you know, it's it's one of those things that you know, he's been he's been working, he's been preparing. You never know when your number's going to get called, but uh, um, you know, we, he came in and you know, even though we didn't start the way we wanted, I mean, it was a you know, it was it was hard for us to really develop any any uh, uh, consistency there in the first half. Uh, went in there at halftime and you know, made a couple of adjustments. And, uh, you know, I thought he did, you know, he did a great job there in the, in the, in the second half, really provided a spark, able to push the ball down the field. You know, we started clicking there in the passing game, scored on our first couple of drives, uh, you know, and got it to a one-score game. And, uh, you know, just unfortunately we weren't able to maintain that consistency as an offense. But, uh, you know, McKenzie, uh, you know, he's such a great competitor. And you know, had some had some magical plays that, that showed up there on Saturday. And, uh, you know, just uh, excited, to, you know, to see him out there playing and competing and, and working to, to lift and build up his team teammates, you know, when his number was called. Well, he was throwing some of those uh, sidearm things. I thought I was seeing Patrick Mahomes out there throwing the football. He moved the football team. In 28-14, final score, North Carolina State against the team hobbled by a lot of illness and uh, sickness, and uh, we gave him a fight, just couldn't pull off the deal. And uh, next up, it's our arch rival Miami. We'll talk more about the NC State game, look ahead to Miami, and more as our show continues. The football fun of the sun sweepstakes wants you to get back into the game and back to vacation with a chance to win a three-night stay at any Hilton Hotel in Florida and Atlanta, plus a football helmet signed by the one and only Charlie Ward. Enter to win at Seminoles.com slash Hilton. That's enter to win at Seminoles.com slash Hilton. Go Noles. Stay Go Noles. Stay tuned as we continue to bring you Seminole football on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. 
My name is Leslie. My favorite thing about the grilled chicken club is the grilled chicken. Like it's actually been on a grill. As soon as you grab it to go take your first bite, it's just like <sighs> insanely good. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brian, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A mac and cheese is you can taste the different types of cheeses and the blends that they use, and everything just comes together. It's like a delicate dance. They're like perfection in every bite. At ViStar, we believe in better. That means treating people better with a kind of friendly, personal service that's kept our members happy since 1952. A smile and personal greeting for everyone who comes into the branch. An online or phone chat for those quick questions. And a call center that's open seven days a week. If you believe that great service is better, join ViStar. Visit ViStarCU.org. Your heating and air conditioning system doesn't care if it's a convenient time to take a break. That's why at Barano Heating and Air, we are ready whenever you need us. Any day, any time, anywhere. Our service team is ready to help even if it's after hours or on the weekend. Plus, with our total service agreement, you always get same-day service with no overtime charges, ever. We will always be there for you. Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell, sponsored by these businesses. Stay tuned for more Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell. ABC 27 wants to make sure that every family has a meal this Thanksgiving. But we need your help to make it happen. Join us for the ABC 27 Turkey Drive benefiting Second Harvest of the Big Ben. Starting Monday, November 15th, visit fightinghunger.org slash turkey or you can scan the code on your screen to donate. Together, we can help make the holidays a little brighter for thousands of Big Ben families. The 8th Annual ABC 27 Turkey Drive, Monday, November 15th. When I hired this firm, Jason told me not to worry. I would do everything possible to make sure that you receive the best care possible and a settlement that is equivalent to your suffering. The holiday season has arrived, and so is the Get Holiday Ready sales event at your Ford dealer. Inventory is arriving daily, so it's the best time to buy a Ford F-Series. Get a Ford F-150 with zero for 60, plus get $500 in retail bonus cash. It's time to get holiday ready with Ford. Get a Ford F-150 with zero for 60 and 500 retail bonus cash, plus complimentary maintenance when you sign up for Ford Pass Rewards. See your Ford dealer today. Recently updated your home? There's a good chance you're paying too much for homeowner's insurance. Give us a call, and in about five minutes, you could save hundreds. Auto, homeowners, life, Waterhouse and Associates. The entire staff truly cares about me. That's why I'm here. Here we are talking Florida State football on a Monday night, a chilly Monday night in Tallahassee, Florida, with head coach Mike Norvell, and uh, we get ready for a huge rivalry game. In fact, we got a question for the coach about what it means to play a rival, particularly on your home field. Before we get to that uh, question, Florida State Athletics would like to thank uh, Florida Farm Bureau Insurance for their support of FSU Athletics. And uh, Coach, uh, it's FSU Miami Week. Senior Day is coming up on Saturday, and uh, kickoff is at 3.30. Speaking of kickoffs, it was announced... Uh, uh, late this weekend that uh, Florida State Boston College, that game will be at 12 noon up on Chestnut Hill at Alumni Stadium. 12 noon kickoff Florida State Boston College. This week Miami Florida State, 3.30 at Doe Campbell Stadium. And that's tonight's Tijuana Flats queso question. It comes from Jim in Tallahassee. And Coach, how important is home field advantage in rivalry games like the one this weekend against Miami? I mean, it's huge. I mean, you know, obviously rivalry games, I mean, there's going to be no shortage of emotion. And, uh, you know, for to be able to, to, to have that, that atmosphere in front of our fans, you know, with that, that home field advantage, uh, you know, just to, to brings the electricity to the game. And I know our guys are excited about it. And uh, you know, can't wait to, to kick off there on uh, Saturday afternoon. 
Yeah, Saturday at uh, 3.30, Florida State, Miami. It's uh, uh, the 66th edition of this series that goes back to 1951. It's, uh, it's one you circle on your calendar every year. Florida State, Miami, whether it's in Coral Gables, well, not Coral Gables, but it, it, uh, Hard Rock Stadium in uh, North uh, Miami Gardens is where it's located, or if it's in Doe Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. Be sure to submit your questions on Seminoles.com for the chance to have your question featured on the show and to score free queso from Tijuana Flats. Coach, I know it was a losing cause on, on Saturday. We, we, we fall to the 19th ranked North Carolina State. They moved up in the polls. and uh, A team that right now is tied with Wake Forest for the Atlantic Division lead. And I t- I'll tell you what, this game between Wake and NC State, one of those two is going to win the Atlantic Division. I'll promise you that. But uh, I digress. Let's talk about uh, uh, honors, individual honors. I know we didn't win the game, and I know it's the ultimate team sport, but for the second week in a row, a defensive lineman wearing garnet and gold was honored by ACC Media as defensive lineman of the week, and that's Keir Thomas. He has had two really good games in a row. He has, and you know he was actually a guest on our show last yeah. week, and uh, you're just so excited about uh, you know the the continued growth that he's showing, and it was a, it, he had played a, an extraordinary game. You know, gave great effort. Uh, you know, physicality. Uh, you know, it's and usually when one of those guys you know wins an award, it's also uh, you know just a compliment to the guys that are around him. And uh, I thought our defensive front is continuing to play at a high level. Uh, those guys, uh, you know, that was a, that was an offense that uh, I think you know throughout the course of the season only giving up a handful of sacks and uh, for us to be able to get to them you know, I think we had three sacks in the game uh, we're able to, to create some pressure and uh, you know I've really seen some positive steps uh, from that defensive front but uh, you know Kier is definitely playing at a very high level and we need him to continue that here on this this back stretch. Yeah and uh, we, we played nine games and uh, Kier Thomas honored defensive lineman of the week and three times already this year Jermaine Johnson has been honored as defensive lineman of the week so those two two bookend defensive ends are really playing at a very high level. They are, and uh, you know, once again, you look at uh, you know also the work of you know Fabian Lovett and then Robert Cooper. You know, those guys are you know Malcolm Ray also had a, had a couple of uh, flash plays with uh, with uh, uh, Jarrett Jackson. I mean, when you have a core of those four guys up front, and uh, you know they for they can all play off of each other and help create that pressure. You know, be able to c- get the quarterback contained. Um, you know, it's 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 definitely uh, an encouraging it's an encouraging uh, your know, feat for them. And then you know for the individual recognition. You know, you know Keard, like I said, he did a wonderful job. You know, finishing on the quarterback and just playing with great uh, and relentless pursuit. I'll, t- well, I'll tell you, one of these days, uh, Alex Bostromano was going to get honored by the ACC media because he is the most consistent putter I can remember. And not only because he consistent with his right foot, but also with his left foot. I've never seen a putter that kicks with two feet, Coach. That's a, that's got to be the only guy in the country that kicks with two feet. Well, I mean, he's a tremendous weapon. Yeah. And, you know, to, to be able to, to flip the field, I thought Alex did a, did an exceptional job there. Um, you know, we probably used him more than I wanted to use him. But, uh, you know, he, you know when you're... When you're numbers called you know to go out there and, and execute uh, uh, at a high level and uh, Alex is definitely a weapon for us. If you're keeping score at home or here in our studio audience at Bricks and Brass, he kicked left footed once and he kicked right footed the rest of the times of the ball game. He, he, keeps me, he keeps me guessing which way. Now I sort of segue into special teams because there was a special play on Saturday afternoon that I think everybody was, uh, I was shocked by and just ecstatic by the onside kick coach to begin the second half. Did you talk about that with your team in the locker room? How about the onside kick? We recover and it jump started as we scored a touchdown. Well, it was something that you know we knew we wanted to we, we wanted to make a spark and uh, you know it was you know we didn't play the way we wanted to offensively you know had a couple of negative plays there um, you know there in the first half um, you know that you know we fell behind and so um, you know we we wanted to try to, to to try to get that spark plug you know to, to kick off the second half and uh, you know I thought Parker did a great job you know located the the ball exceptionally well and it's something that you know it's seen throughout the course of the week that if we got a certain look that we wanted to try to. Uh, uh, try to expose that and uh, you know it and it did exactly what it needed to do and you know for the offense to once we recovered offense went down there scored a touchdown uh, your defense got a stop got the next touchdown it really just changed the entire momentum of the game and I was really pleased that when you get an opportunity to, to change the game in special teams you know our guys showed up. That uh, Parker Roadhouse not only kicked the football but he recovered the football got shaken up a little bit when he recovered that thing but he was fighting with a linebacker and he wanted that ball more than that linebacker wanted. Yeah, yeah unfortunately I mean it uh, you know, Parker got a little got a little banged up on the play and uh, you know it was, it was one of those things that uh, um, you know he was you know he was pretty excited about it uh, you know being able to make the play but um, you know it's it's you know you, when your number's called you know there's a, there's a lot of pressure that goes in that situation but for him to, to go out there and execute the way that he did I was, I was really proud of him. I, I know that we were unable to score and move the football very well in the first half but what do we do differently between the first half and the second half particularly on the offense? Yeah you know I, I thought we you know our, the efficiency in our passing game was def- definitely much more improved and we pushed the ball down the field, uh, 
uh, you know, wanted to be a little bit more aggressive. And then I, I was pleased with our offensive line. You know, we went in at halftime, and there were some, there were, they were really doing a nice job of bottling up some of the things in the run game, uh, made an adjustment, uh, you know, an adjustment or two, things that we hadn't really worked on a ton during the, during the cor course of the, uh, of the week. But our guys were able to, to take the, uh, the, the locker room uh, adjustment, and they applied it on the field. And it, and it sparks a, a couple of plays in the run game. Um, and then, you know, like I said, uh, just the quarterback, receiver, tight ends, all those guys, uh, you really did a nice job of, uh, you know, you're providing the efficiency in the passing game that was that was necessary and, and open up some uh, uh, some chunk gains that we were able to get down the field. Two special scoring plays that we had in the game, and uh, one was uh, a tremendous catch by Keyshawn Helton. We'll talk about Keyshawn. And uh, the second was that wildcat thing that uh, Jay Sean Corbin ran in uh, an unusual formation on fourth down and goal. Tell us first about uh, Keyshawn Helton. Uh, he, he plays wide receiver. He's a veteran on this team, but uh, he made a catch like Chris Carter back in the old Minnesota Valley where he had two toes just inbounds and made the catch a remarkable play. Yeah, and that was, a, it was just an extraordinary effort play. I mean, it was, um, you know, for McKenzie, I mean, you know, got a little bit of pressure, kind of scrambled around, you know, went you know, right, went left, spun around, and, uh, you know, Keyshawn, who was actually, you know, his route took him to the complete opposite side of the field. And, you know, when he saw McKenzie scramble, uh, you know, he took off. And, uh, you know, I just, it's one of those plays that as a coach, you know, you see that somebody that, that, that doesn't let up on the play. He's going to the, to the very end. Uh, McKenzie was able to see him straight and across the field and threw a perfect ball where it was us or nobody and you, know, you already just you know touched on the catch. I mean it was it's one that you will remember. It was uh, an outstanding catch. You know, Keyshawn showed up in some big moments and, and that was definitely one of them there Saturday. And coach you like the Wildcat, don't you? Uh, I do. And it was uh, it was something that we'd seen, you know, that NC State defense had actually only allowed one rushing touchdown yeah. all season. Um, and so we you know, we knew that it was gonna be it was gonna be uh, you know you know tough sledding when you get down there but uh, you know we thought thought we could create uh, you know a little bit of an advantage and uh, you know Jay Sean and, and the offensive line and, and tight ends did a nice job to be able to get there and uh, you know down when we got, had to had to run the ball to get in the end zone. Big touchdown. Florida State made it close in the, at the end. A uh, late touchdown by NC State and that's the ball game uh, in the books already. Miami is up next and we'll talk about the Miami Hurricanes in a moment. The Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles reminds you to stay in the game and play by the rules. Texting and driving is against the law. One text takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds and at 55 miles an hour. That's like driving around the length of a football field with your eyes closed. To win while driving, you must focus, put it down, and focus on driving to arrive alive. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Okay, you thirsty little spin goblins. I want you to pedal into the next dimension. Spin it! Spin! Spin! Uh-oh! Carmen's falling behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Don't ride the bike of shame. Come to Planet Fitness and find your own length with tons of equipment, free fitness training, and no hissing. Join today for just $10 a month. Fire. Some fear it. Some fight it. Some break its will and make it do their bidding. Sonny's Barbecue, local pit masters since 68. Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell, sponsored by these businesses. Stay tuned for more Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell. Do we buy or rent? The real estate market is ever-changing, even in Tallahassee. So call a realtor from the Tallahassee Board of Realtors today. Or visit us online at tbrnet.org. Tallahassee Board of Realtors. Some roofing companies say they're the best in town with the best price around. That safety is their top priority. They have 240 years of combined roofing experience. Put your social security number right there and make the check out to cash. But they don't always have your best interests at heart. At T-Spark, we believe in doing things the right way, the safe way. Second time this week, man. Ugh. ABC 27 and Second Harvest are teaming up for the ABC 27 Turkey Drive to feed families this Thanksgiving. Wednesday, November 17th, drop off donations at Ponce de Leon Park or Bannerman Crossing. And it's so easy, you don't even have to get out of your car. Talking Florida.
Florida State football with head coach Mike Norvell. Inside Seminole Football is our program. It's Monday night. That's why we're talking Florida State football. Appreciate those of you watching on ABC 27 on a delayed television basis around the state and also on the uh, Learfield IMG Seminole Radio Network. And uh, it's always great talking with Coach Mike Norvell, finding out new little things about our favorite football team, the Florida State Seminoles. Tico People's Gas is delivering natural gas that helps you save energy and earn cash back. Learn more at peoplesgas.com. And, uh, Coach, we got another question. Uh, here it is. Well, it's a nugget, and I'll get your, your, your co comments on the nugget. But uh, tonight's Chick-fil-A stat nugget of the week. Florida State has 11 different players with at least one receiving touchdown, and that is tied for the most in the ACC. We spread the ball around. Because that's tonight's Chick-fil-A stat nugget. And everybody that plays wide receiver or tight end or running back on this football team it has to be ready to make a catch and then find out where that ends on it. Uh, no question. And uh, you, we talked to our guys about making the most of your opportunities. And, uh, you know, this is a uh, you know, an offense that we like to we like to, to spread the ball around. And, uh, you know, those guys, as you look as, at, at the, as the season has progressed, one of the things I'm really pleased with offensively is that when we got down in, in the red zone, uh, you know, our efficiency in the red zone has, has really improved. And, uh, you know, I think we scored on our last 19 red zone drives, uh, one of the best, uh, you know, one of the best in the country and scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Um, you know, and, and, the, and our guys are taking a great deal of pride in that, you know, um, and, and to see that, you know, whether it's on the run game or, or there in the passing game, uh, a lot of guys that are being able to make that impact is, is definitely a good sign for the future and, and for, uh, you know, the contribution of, of, of our players. Yeah, red zone scoring is essential. You get it inside that 20-yard line, you want to score points. You want to score touchdowns when you get it in there. And then all, as Coach mentioned, 19 consecutive red zone scoring uh, uh, over the last three, four football games. Now, uh, Coach, one of the keys that, that uh, helps you win is, is eliminating penalties. And I know we had a ton of penalties, particularly the fourth quarter at Clemson. And I don't know if they all were real penalties, but they were flagged. Uh, you don't have to answer that question, but I won't even ask that question. But just two penalties for 10 yards in the game against North Carolina State, uh, a tremendous accomplishment for a team uh, as sick as we were. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, th I think our guys, you know, you, you see the you, you see these uh, the points of emphasis and things that we're really trying to. You know, we want to be a disciplined football team, and that's something that's that's incredibly important. That you, know, you don't want to beat yourself, and uh, you know, you try to try to you know execute that throughout the course of the game. It's something that we've uh, uh, you've been hitting on, you know, for you know since I've got here, but also you know really been a, been a huge emphasis throughout uh, emphasis throughout this year. Uh, didn't start the season the way we wanted, but you've you've seen that you know continued growth and uh, you know coming off to the Clemson game where there was, you know, you know, more penalties than we wanted. Uh, I thought our guys did a great job of, uh, of playing discipline, playing focused. Uh, you know, and one of those penalties were, were really an intentional penalty to create more space, uh, you know, for uh, uh, for the uh, the sky punt where we tried, we were able to pin them down inside the five-yard line. So uh, really, I mean, it was one penalty for, for, uh, for our guys, and that was something I was really proud of them for. Florida State takes on the Miami Hurricanes this set. You know that. Your Florida State fans watching this show, listen to this show, you know it's FSU Miami week. It's a huge rivalry, a series that began back in 51. We had to play them down there about seven times in a row, and then we started playing home and home and home, and uh, the game has been televised, I think, for the last three decades. It's, it's that big of a ball game, FSU versus Miami. It, 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 I, I heard it, in your press conference today you said that uh, there was a buzz around the locker room because the players know it's FSU Miami week. <laughs> it's such a huge week, not for coaches, for the fans, but for the players. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, you know, this, this is one of those games. There's only two games that I talk about on our first uh, our first day back in fall camp, and uh, you know, and, and Miami is the first one that's on the schedule, and uh, you, it's something that's important. You are guys year-round. Uh, you, the, the focus on this game, and you know, uh, you, it's everybody get excited game week, but it's what you've done to prepare yourself for this moment, for this week, and you know, all, all the, the sprints in the off season, all the lessons that have been learned throughout the first nine weeks of the season. Uh, you know, we've got to apply those this week, and you know, we've got to be, we got to be the best that we've been. Uh, you know, there's gonna be a lot of emotion. It's uh, you, know, you know, our guys. Have, uh, you know they've they've grown up playing against a lot of the guys that we're going to face here this uh, you know, this week for Miami and and Miami is a team that's playing you know you look at the last three weeks I mean they're playing at an extremely high level they've had some close ball games throughout the course of the season uh, you know they're playing with a lot of confidence and so I mean it's going to be a great game and uh, we're definitely looking forward to uh, uh, to the opportunity and the matchup yeah and, and their head coach just happens to be a Florida State graduate didn't play ball here but Manny got his degree at Florida State he's a Florida State Seminole but uh, I know he he wants to win on on Saturday. 
Saturday, 3.30 kickoff, Florida State versus Miami, FSU versus those Miami Hurricanes. Planet Fitness is proud a proud partner of the Florida State Seminoles. At Planet Fitness, gain access to a clean and spacious club with tons of equipment and the one and only uh, judgment-free zone, all for just $10 a month. Go Knowles, that's Planet Fitness. Fitness. Stay tuned as we continue to bring you Seminole football on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. At ViStar, we believe in better. That means treating people better with a kind of friendly, personal service that's kept our members happy since 1952. A smile and personal greeting for everyone who comes into the branch. An online or phone chat for those quick questions and a call center that's open seven days a week. If you believe that great service is better, join ViStar. Visit ViStarCU.org. Today tastes like a home game. Like a huddle. Tastes like we're bringing the heat. And like a front row seat. <laughs> Never tasted this good. Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell, sponsored by these businesses. Stay tuned for more Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell. It's Grandma. She got run over by a reindeer. Sorry to hear that. Insurance doesn't want to pay. They say she doesn't deserve a penny. Don't worry, Santa. Our army of lawyers will slay them. <clears throat> you need your parking validated? I'm up on the roof, so... Right. You don't have to be famous to hire America's largest injury law firm, Morgan & Morgan. Seven flooring in Mohawk Smart Strand. Astonishing softness, maximum durability. My experience with Southern Flooring was exceptional. Southern Flooring has done work with us on well over 100 homes. Southern Flooring has been supplying us uh, carpet for our rental properties, vinyl point flooring, tile. Southern Flooring is the only company that I recommend and the only one that I would recommend. Hassle-free, stress-free, easy, on-time um, installation of any kind of products in your house. Go with Southern Flooring. Welcome back. I don't know. I don't know what else is on television tonight or on radio tonight, but we appreciate you tuning in on ABC 27 on our Seminole uh, Learfield Seminole Sports Network for tonight's Inside Seminole Football program with head coach Mike Norvell. We're glad you tuned in. And for our studio audience, thanks for coming out this evening on a cool night in downtown Tallahassee. Coach, we got great fans every week. We know we got fans going to get that war chant going. They're going to they're going to clap and applause. We come back out of break, and, and uh, here's a reminder of all our fans here and those watching and listening. Join the Seminoles at the Tucker Center for the 2021-22 uh, basketball season. Florida State women's basketball kicks it off on Tuesday. That's November 9th. That's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock against North Florida. The men's basketball team hosts the University of Pennsylvania the next night on Wednesday. That's the 10th of November at 9 o'clock. Purchase your tickets by visiting Seminoles.com or by calling the ticket office at 850-644-1830. Hoops in the air in mid-November. FSU women's basketball tomorrow night. And then the men on Wednesday night. And I, I'll say this, uh, from what I've seen in the exhibition games, Florida State men's basketball team is uh, going to be pretty exciting to watch this season uh, down at the Tucker Center. Now, Gene, Gene, let, me, let me just, uh, just kind of chime in here. I just want to first off uh, give a congratulations to our, to our FSU uh, soccer team. Yes. I mean, this weekend, yeah. um, you know, number one ranked Florida State soccer team yeah. um, you know, won the ACC championship and just an an incredible performance. Uh, just so excited for those ladies. And, uh, you know, now they've got the ACC under the belt, now looking at the national championship. But I uh, just wanted to say congratulations uh, to that group. I mean, just an, an incredible, incredible team. And, uh, you know, such a joy to watch and cheer on. Football and football. Uh, you heard the head coach. And what a tremendous accomplishment to go up and beat the number one Virginia Cavaliers to win the ACC title. 
again. <laughs> it's good to be a. It's great to be a Florida State Seminole fan again. Uh, men, uh, women's soccer, women's basketball, women uh, men's basketball, and Florida State versus Miami. It just doesn't get a whole lot bigger. Coach, can we get heal? Is there a magic button you could push to to get everybody healed so we can be healthy to play this ball game? Yeah, we're going to be ready, and uh, I know our guys. You know, they're excited about the week of preparation, and uh, you know, it's a, it's part of the game of football, man. You know, that's the thing that it's a it's a great team sport, and you know, these guys uh, they work so hard throughout the course of the season for their for their shot and uh, you know it, it's here in front of us uh, we got to have a great week of, uh, of preparation you know you know, putting together a great game plan offense defense and special teams but uh, I mean this is what college football is all about to be able to play in these games and to be able to do it here at home I mean it's it's going to be a wonderful week we are going to have two special student athlete guests a little well coming up in just a moment on our program this evening and uh, both are from the offensive side uh, tell, tell, tell us about the uh, big lineman that's been one of your captains now for the last I think eight games uh, that he has started in uh, uh, Devontae Love Taylor and also Jordan Wilson who is a uh, tight end and when we play two tight ends he starts as well those are two veteran players that came in from other schools that have taken on leadership roles for our football team yeah, absolutely and both those guys are grad transfers coming in, you know, last year, and unfortunately, uh, you know, both of them had season-ending injuries that, uh, you know, really uh, was a, was a challenge. And uh, you know, what I love is just, uh, you know, their their heart and the, just the determination, work ethic they have. You know, thank goodness we could get them back for another year. And, you know, they've been wonderful leaders for this team. And, uh, you know, Devontae, you know, just uh, the impact that he's made on that offensive line group and just, you know, being a, a seasoned voice and, and somebody that's, you know, really kind of taken, you know, we got three freshmen that are starting on the offensive line right now, and he's taken them under their wings and really kind of helped bring them along, uh, you know, through the good and, you know, and so, sometimes through the, the, the setbacks that we faced. But, I mean, just been so constant, you know, so constant for us. And then, you know, Jordan Wilson is just playing at an incredibly high level, coming off his best two games uh, as a Seminole, but what, what I love is, you know, these last couple games he's had more more pass receptions and he's made some explosive plays, but if you look back throughout the course of the season, just the physicality, the toughness, uh, the job that he did without the ball in his hand, uh, you know, has just really been special, and him and Cam McDonald, Preston Daniels, those guys at the tight end position, uh, you know, sometimes they don't always get the the, the acclaim, uh, you know, from for what they're doing, you know, you know, without the ball in their hands, but they've really done a nice job, uh, you know, there at that tight end position. When I think of tight ends, uh, they're receiving and I think, guys, they want the ball. Throw me the ball. But uh, when, when Cam McDonald was on earlier this season on this program, Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell, I asked him that question. You like catching the ball? Clutch, to, or touch the, or, or he said, I like inline blocking. I mean, he's dedicated <laughs> to improving his blocking skills. And I guess if you want to play at the next level, you have to be a pretty good blocker to be a tight end in the NFL. Yeah, and that's one of the great things. You know, Coach Chris Thompson, uh, he does a, does a wonderful job with our tight ends. And, you know, he's a former O-line coach. You know, he played the tight end position, but, you know, really helping them in the fundamental aspect of, of, of what it takes because that versatility is key and uh, you know you, you look at the season and, the, and the, the way that we've been able to run the ball I mean it's a, a big uh, uh, tribute not only to the offensive line but also that tight end group that's uh, you know, helped create some of those lanes. We're going to get the uh, uh, captain for the last eight games up first and then uh, that'll be Devontae Love Taylor and then in our next segment we'll bring along that tight end that likes to block people and catch touchdowns in, 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 in a transfer from UCLA uh, that's Jordan Wilson. Those fellows are coming up just around the corner. Coach, before we go to break, good luck against those Miami Hurricanes. Let's go out there and take care of business and beat them. Yes, sir, and uh, thank you so much for everybody coming out tonight. Can't wait to see you there on uh, Saturday. It's going to be a great week, and go Knowles. Go Knowles. Tijuana Flats wants to give Knowles fans a free taco and chips every Friday this football season. Just wear your Knowles gear into your local Tijuana Flats and mention the Knowles Fridays promo to get your free taco and chips. It's that easy, so grab your Knowles gear and head to Tijuana Flats this coming Friday. Tijuana Flats, home of the Knowles Fridays. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Ready? Okay, you thirsty little spin goblins. I want you to pedal into the next dimension. Spin it! Spin! Spin! Uh-oh! Carmen's falling behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Spin! Spin! Spin till you bleed! Don't ride the bike of shame. Come to Planet Fitness and find your own link with tons of equipment, free fitness training, and no hissing. Join today for just $10 a month. Your extraordinary brain, a network of microscopic vessels so long they could circle the Earth three times. As your body's command center, it's the force behind your every thought, every memory, and every impulse. It's what makes you 
you. And it's what drives us towards advanced technologies and cutting edge treatments to create the most comprehensive neuroscience program in North Florida and South Georgia. Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell, sponsored by these businesses. Stay tuned for more Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell. Live tonight, the stars become part of Rhythm Nation. It's Janet Jackson, all night. And with a double elimination. Judges, don't be nasty. Janet Jackson, night on Dancing, ABC Tonight. Get on your feet for country music's biggest night. The CMA Awards, with collaborations you'll only see on this stage. The CMA Awards, love, Wednesday on ABC. It's time to get holiday ready with Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks. Or with Ford Explorer, America's all-time best-selling SUV. And come home in a Ford Bronco Sport. That's how you get holiday ready. Now, get 0% financing for 60 months on a 2021 Escape, Edge, or Explorer. Only at your local Ford dealer. Monday night, and we're talking Florida State football on TV, on radio, and uh, great to have you with us on this evening. We uh, just heard from head coach Mike Norvell. We're fired up. It's Miami week, and uh, I think the entire Seminole Nation knows it's FSU Miami week, and uh, we're getting ready on a Monday night. Uh, a little cool here. The weather's going to be cool all week long. It's uh, to a big offensive lineman like Devontae Love Taylor. Welcome to our show, Devontae. Thank you for having me. But for a big offensive lineman, I bet you this cool weather is, uh, boy, it's just like, uh, thank you, Lord. It's cool weather because uh, in those 100-degree practices, is back in August, September. You got to be hoping for cool weather, huh? Oh uh, yes, sir, for sure. Yeah, but uh, you grew up in Florida, so uh, you're familiar with the weather. And uh, Trinity, Florida. You know, we, we were talking during the break. I said, I know where exactly is Trinity? It's in the Tampa Bay area. What you told me? Yes, sir. It's in Pasco County. It's about 20 minutes, 30 minutes away from downtown Tampa. Yeah, and the Suncoast Parkway will bring you up, take an exit, and boy, there you are in Trinity, huh? Yes, sir. Now, did, uh, when you first began your college career, you you started at, at Florida International down in South Florida, so you spent some time down there. In fact, you, you finished your career there and had a year of eligibility, came to Florida State as a graduate student. But uh, what was it like in, in, in the South? Were you, were you on the FIU team that beat Miami? Yes, sir. I was. I, okay, how about, hey, that's why we have Devontae Love Taylor. He knows the secret to beating the Miami Hurricanes. But I had to ask you that. What was it like uh, leaving Tampa, going down to South Florida? How was your experience at FIU? Um, it was a great experience. You know, it was a bit of a culture shock, you know, going from small Trinity to Miami. And, you know, I had a great experience down there. I learned a lot. And without going there, I never would have ended up here. Yeah. And uh, was Butch Davis the coach down there? Who yes, sir. I had Coach Davis for three years, and yeah. I had Coach Turner for one. Okay. So, because I, I, Butch Davis was North Carolina, then he was a consultant with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I had a chance to rub elbows with a great football guy. I mean, uh, so so you did play with Butch. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, now, sir. now. In making your decision where you could go uh, for another year of eligibility because that's available, uh, what did did Florida State offer to you that made you very interested in coming up here? Um, you know, they had a new staff coming in, and I just wanted an equal chance to uh, compete and earn a starting job. You know, I grew up in Florida. I grew up watching Florida State, and just being able to be a part of the turnaround that's happening right now was was all I needed. Yeah, and uh, that that spear on that that on the helmet and uh, the guarded and gold. I mean, uh, if Florida State's a national brand. I mean, people across the country or actually around the the, the 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 world, people recognize Florida State University because of that helmet and uh, the tradition, uh, the, the the great seasons that Coach Bobby Bowden had. Now Mike Norvell is having, and uh, so you said, "Okay, I want to go to Florida State." Yes, sir. Good for you. I'm glad you did. <laughs> Thank now, you. Now, last year you were hurt. You had an injury, and uh, how, I, 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 how many games did you play last year? Uh, I played in the first six, and I think I ended up missing the last three or four. Yeah, and it, because it was a brief season because of COVID, and uh, what a difference a year makes. COVID last year, this year, uh, we're still fighting that stuff, but uh, virtually we're clean. Let's hope we, we stay that way. You have something special about you because the coach has made you the captain of this football, one of our four captains of this, of this team. For the last eight games, I believe, it was seven of you started. What's, what does it feel like to you to be a captain named by the coaches to represent your teammates? You know, it's an honor, and it's just I'm so grateful for the coaches and my teammates for just looking and putting me into that leadership role. You know, it's, 
it's a great accomplishment and you know every day I just get to go out and lead by example and, and lead vocally or whatever the team needs me to do. Devontae Love Taylor uh, plays offensive guard, but you can also play the other position. It looks like the way the way Coach Atkins is coaching, uh, they, you get some cross-training in every position, don't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's that's not just me. That's our whole group. You know, I, we don't have a single player that can just play one position. You know, most of us can play four or five. Yeah, and, and Coach mentioned me before we went to break and, and had a chance to visit with you. He said that uh, you're a leader, you lead this team, and you're bringing along these young guys. Tell us about about the young guys that you mentor as a you're not you don't have any gray hair but as a gray beard a veteran okay uh, tell us about the young guys that you're bringing along in the offensive line room you know the young guys we got you know Maurice Rob Darius um, you know we got so many good and talented young guys and I won't even say I'm bringing them along anymore you know Maurice has grown so much in the past year you know, he's out there. He's making the calls and stuff now. It's not even me anymore. I'm just playing football. You know, he's kind of taking over the room. And because, you know, when I'm gone, he's going to have to do it. And Darius has been doing great. You know, uh, Rob also stepped in as a freshman last year, and he's been playing great this year. All right. Uh, you can tell a captain when he names everybody in his room and tells you how good they are. That's why Devontae's a captain of our football team, one of four, uh, uh, on the team that goes out there for the coin toss and also leads the team in the locker room during practice and pumps them up when they need to be and probably kicks them in the rear and when they need to be kicked in the rear. Uh, FSU Miami. You knew that that game was on the schedule. Uh, you played in the game last year because it was early. You, you were starting in that game. What does this game mean to you personally? Personally, it means a lot. You know, I grew up watching these games, and just it's senior night as well, and it's a perfect opportunity to go out with a bang. Uh, you mentioned senior night, and Coach Norvell mentioned senior night or day. Uh, how special is that for a Florida State football player to have parents and family in attendance to watch you play your final game at Doe Campbell Stadium? You no, know, it's so special for me personally because, you know, going into college as a freshman, I never thought I'd be spending playing my last home game in Doe Campbell Stadium. And it's, it's just a blessing to be here, and I'm so happy for the opportunity. I think Florida State fans have been blessed with having you as part of this football team, even though it's been for two years. Devontae Love Taylor, thank you very much. for and Beat those hurricanes on Saturday, will you, fella? Yes, sir, beat those you. hurricanes. Okay. With zero sugar and now even more delicious as the new Coca-Cola sugar, the best Coke ever. Well, find out for yourself. Stay tuned as we continue to bring you Seminole football on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. My name is Leslie. My favorite thing about the Grilled Chicken Club is the grilled chicken. Like, it's actually been on a grill. As soon as you grab it to go take your first bite, it's just like, <sighs> insanely good. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brian, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A mac and cheese is you can taste the different types of cheeses and the blends that they use, and everything just comes together. It's like a delicate dance. They're like perfection in every bite. Today tastes like a home game, like a huddle. Tastes like we're bringing the heat and like a front row seat. Today tastes like we're a team and it never tasted this good. Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell, sponsored by these businesses. Stay tuned for more Inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell. The Gem Collection presents an estate jewelry event. Select from a collection of different eras, including Georgian, Victorian, Edwardian, Art Deco, and Retro periods. We'll have historical jewelry, cocktail rings, exotic gems, and signed pieces. Join us for the preview sale on Friday, November 19th, or the full show on Saturday, November 20th. Find these timeless treasures only at the Gem Collection. Here we are, 
are talking Florida State football. It's Monday night. We're at Bricks and Brass, and we appreciate all of you tuning in on uh, ABC 27 and the Tallahassee Thomasville market, and those of you watching on a delay basis around the state of Florida, and also our great listeners on the Learfield IMG Seminole Radio Network. And, and now we have another special student athlete guest. Uh, tonight we're blessed with two student athletes for Florida State. You just, you just visited with Devontae Love Taylor, offensive line. And next up, it's Jordan Wilson, tight end for the Florida State Seminoles. Uh, Jordan, welcome to our program. And, I appreciate uh, it. I appreciate uh, it. Coach speaks very highly. I, I, I ask you, I said, tell us about these two fellows we're going to have on. I said, oh, yeah, he, oh, he catches the ball, he plays. And energetic, always has energy, and uh, a leader on this football team. Yes, and one of the toughest positions, uh, I guess quarterback is the toughest, but one of the toughest has to be tight end. What, what makes that position so tough? You know, tight, tight end is a tough position because you have to be really good at what you do in every aspect of the game, you know, as a pass blocker, run blocker, you know, running routes against, you know, smaller guys. You really have to be on top of your game in, in every aspect. So that's why that's why it makes it hard to be a great tight end. And it looks like, uh, Jordan, you're at the top of your game right now. Two really good games in a row. A uh, big catch against uh, the Clemson Tigers and uh, playing against an uh, all-ACC linebacker that had you in coverage. And then last week, uh, some really big play Plays that extended drives that resulted in scores for the Noles. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, these last couple games have been very pivotal, especially, especially in my career. You know, coming off my injury from last year, um, it for sure took took some time. You know, get back to being myself on the field. And these past couple games have I've, I've been able to you know settle in and just be able to do what I do. Yeah, and uh, you're, you're, you're working out in practice with several quarterbacks. Jordan was unable to go last week, and here comes Mackenzie Milton just mm -hmm. slinging that full ball around, mm -hmm. and uh, he got you a couple of really nice catches of that ball. What was it like yes, getting ready for that ball? And we asked Coach this, when, when did we know that Jordan was not going to be able to quarterback? He said, well, earlier in the week he was ill, couldn't practice, mm -hmm. right. and, and so you, you figure, well, we're not going to have Jordan, so that put more pressure on everybody on the offense, right. didn't it? it did. Yeah, you know, Jordan, he, he brings a lot to our offense, you know, his, his versatility and the way he can run around and make plays and just, you know, be great for us. Um, it, it really, it really gave, us, gave us a challenge, you know. Um, guys like McKenzie and, you know, receivers and uh, running backs, we, we had to step up. And that, that's what happened. Yeah, and uh, playing, uh, it wasn't just the quarterback that was ill. Right. I understand it was about 25, 30% of the team that had that. Right. You didn't have it, did you? I'm not going to say No, no. <laughs> no I, I, didn't, I didn't have, um, you know, many symptoms. But, yeah, the, the flu is, you know, it's, it's out there. And, yeah. Uh, it hit our, hit our team hard last week. But, you know, we, we pushed through and uh, – uh, went out there on Saturday. Yeah, it's not just the team. Uh, Florida State University campus has been hit by that flu bug, and a lot mm -hmm. of students have been un unable to go to class because of it. Get well, Seminoles. Get well, particularly right. Florida State Seminole football players because we got a big game. Before I ask you about the FSU-Miami game, and uh, the, the, this is a huge rivalry game, as you know. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, you grew up in Nashville? Yes, sir. Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, and, uh, sir. You were nationally, nationally recruited out of Nashville, and uh, you selected UCLA out on the West Coast. What made a, a Tennessee kid decide he wanted to try playing football on the West Coast? You know, um, growing up in Nashville, you know, being there for, you know, 17 years of my life, I felt like I wanted to give myself the, the best opportunity to, you know, see the world and get a great education and give myself the best opportunity to play at the highest level of football. So, um, the first time I went to California in high school was I was a sophomore and uh, I went for a language grant. Um, you know, I'm I'm fluent in Chinese, so I was I did a, not know that. Huh? <laughs> I was given an opportunity to go out to California and you know study Chinese. And oh. after that trip, I told myself if I ever got the opportunity to you know play football in California, I'd, I'd do that. So when I got the call from UCLA, I knew it was it was wow. Done. Very. I, I know how to say Kadishiwa in Japanese, but I have no <laughs> earthly idea how to say hello, how are you in Chinese. <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'll ask you one day. Uh, yeah. that's, now. From UCLA, the attraction of Florida State University, uh, were mm -hmm. you recruited by FSU early? Did you have a connection with uh, any of Mike Norvell's staff uh, mm -hmm. after going to UCLA? Um, I did have a connection, actually. Uh, Coach Dillingham had, you know, recruited me out of high school when he was at Arizona State with um, uh, some other coaches. So that was one connection. And Coach Novell actually recruited me as well at Memphis. At Memphis. So, and it's crazy because I actually scored my first collegiate touchdown playing against Coach Norvell. So it all just made sense in the end, you know. 
So. It's, uh, it's, it's, that, it's that butterfly effect, I think, you know, when the right. a butterfly wings over the other. I don't right. know. I don't know. How I, but but yeah. anyway, I'm glad you're here at Florida State oh, University. Me too. Me too. Now, we, we have t- taken the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, to quote William Shakespeare, right. uh, from Hamlet. And you could probably translate Hamlet into Chinese. Now, I, I, I'm going I'm to keep busting your chops on the Chinese. <laughs> no, no, but, go ahead. But, but Chinese, my goodness gracious. I, wish, I, can't, I can barely speak English, <laughs> let alone be fluent in, in, in two. But... Florida State, Miami. Yes, the, it, I co- her coach said at his press conference, it tell me, at his press conference, there was a buzz around the locker room. Do you mm-hmm. feel that buzz? Do you feel that excitement? This is a rivalry. Oh, yeah. You can, you can for sure tell, you know, just the way we, we came to work yesterday. Uh, the guys are fired up. You know, we, 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 come, we come to work with a workman's mentality, but... You know, at the end of the day, we know that, you know, this week is, is, is something special, and we're motivated. Motivated. Jordan Wilson, tight end, will start against, you know, who the Miami Hurricanes. Will you do me a favor, Jordan? Will you do me a favor? Of course. Uh, I think I speak for the entire audience here. Uh-huh. When you line up in that first snap on, on the offense against Miami, will you tell that linebacker, in Chinese, uh-huh. we're going to beat you. I sure will. There you I go. Sure will. <laughs> hey, Jordan Wilson, tight end, Florida State University. Thank you for being a special guest I appreciate it. tonight on Inside Seminole Football. For the Vice Star Credit Union. I wonder how you say that in Chinese. Vice Star <laughs> Credit Union, do good and bank better. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield.